So when exactly is the best time to fish lures that imitate crawfish? Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Hey, before the video gets going, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and punch the notification bell. We have videos that come out three times per week. And also be sure to check out our new blog site, thebassfishinglife.com. There's new content posted all throughout the week there as well. Thank you so very much. Well, as we're coming into the spring of the year, there is a lot of talk about the color red, specifically the color red and crawfish. Well, we're going to dive right in today to crawfish in depth, probably more in depth than you've ever talked about them before. As a matter of fact, when I was doing some browsing around on the internet, I found a wonderful article on Bassmaster.com. The title of the article is Understanding Bass Forage Crawfish, and it came out last December. Some of you may have seen it. Well, I went through and read that article in depth and did some other research as well, and I was there was a lot of stuff in there that I already knew or was aware of, but there were some really important things in there that I did not know as well. And because we're coming into the springtime and talking about red, I really want to go into this. I think you're going to find this information absolutely fascinating. The article was written by Pete Mathiason, and in it he refers to the work of this man right here. I'm not even going to attempt to mess up his name, but he is a biologist in the state of Ohio, and he did his master's thesis on crawfish. So this guy has spent way more time with this little invertebrate than I'm sure any of the rest of us have. So that is where this information comes from. I will go ahead and put the link to that article down below. So if you want to read it in depth, you will be able to do so. It is not a surprise that bass love crawfish. We know that. We fish crawfish imitating baits all the time. We've caught largemouth and smallmouth and spotted bass that cough up crayfish into the live well. So that is not a surprise. But I really want to dive into using baits that imitate them both in the fall and in the spring which we are coming up into now most of us realize that crawfish molt okay as they grow like many crustaceans to get larger they've got to molt or shed their skin you could say it is during that molting process afterwards that they are usually their brightest colors whether they are orange or red it's after the molt but when that water hits 50 degrees, something magical happens. No matter where you're at in the country, when that water hits 50 degrees, according to the research, the crawfish start their breeding season, not below 50, right when that water breaks that 50 degree mark. The first thing that happens is that the males of the species come up on top of the rocks and then they start to walk around looking for receptive females. It is during this time that these crawfish are the most vulnerable to bass and they absolutely get hammered by the largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass when the males of that species, of the crawfish, are on top of the rocks looking for receptive females is when the best bite is. And it's important to note the molt has not happened yet. It is after the breeding season, the mating season, that the male crawfish go ahead and then molt and shed that exterior layer. And that is when they become orangish and reddish. And at that time, after the breeding season is done, they go back down into their rock crevices and they are much, much harder for the bass to get to. So that's probably the major misunderstanding as bass anglers that we have is that they have not molted yet when they are the most vulnerable. The other thing that's important to know, as these crawfish walk around on top of these rocks, they have a very distinct clicking sound and the bass key in on that. So using lures that imitate that clicking sound, whether it's rattles 
in a crankbait or whether it is your worm weights that are bouncing around on the rocks, that clicking sound is very critical to imitating what is actually going on down there. Now, as far as the types of locations that crawfish prefer to hang out in, we know they love rocks. But unlike bass that come up and fan out their beds, crawfish rely on nature to clean out those, those breeding areas or those nesting types of areas. So anytime that you can find rock that is exceptionally clean, you're going to be better off. I mean, don't get me wrong, they will breed in the mud, but that is last resort. So if you have a part of your lake that has got some good wind or current moving through it, and the rocks in that particular location are cleaned off, that is going to be a high percentage area. The other thing to note is that crawfish, according to this research, are very light sensitive. So depending on the water clarity of your lake, if those crawfish are up shallower during this 50 degree mark when the breeding season is going on, you're probably going to have better luck on low light days when it's really cloudy out there because they are very sensitive to the light. That also means on clear lakes, ultra clear bodies of water, that those crawfish may be much deeper, as deep as like 30 feet. So that is important to understand that if it's a really bright sunny day out, that the rocks that are up shallow will not have a high as concentration of crawfish as the ones that are deeper because they're very, very light sensitive. So low light times, whether it is morning, evening, or on cloudy days, are going to increase the odds of those little crustaceans being out of those crevices and up on top of those rocks during that breeding season. Now here is something that I guess I was aware of but not acutely aware of, and that is that crayfish or crawfish have a very distinct breeding season in the fall. And this one is often overlooked by anglers, and according to the research that this biologist had done, the bass bite on the fall breeding season oftentimes is better than the spring. When we think about fall fishing, we often focus on bait fish, shad, that type of forage base, but the, the second crayfish or the second crawfish breeding season is going on really strong. And once again, the males of the species during that time get up on top of those rocks when they are most vulnerable. And the bass know this. As far as the temperature in the fall, when the fall breeding season for crawfish takes place, it's once again down near that 50 degree mark. So keep a close eye on the water temperature. Once it dips down in that 45 degree area, that could shut it right down. The other thing to take note of is in the fall, if you get a real severe cold front and it pushes that water temperature down, it could back off that fall breeding season or stop it altogether. If you've done much browsing around on YouTube, on the internet, you've probably seen a lot of underwater footage of how bass attack crawfish when they want to eat them. Now, one thing to keep in mind, a lot of this underwater footage is filmed during the spawning season, and bass are not always looking to eat what comes on their bed. Oftentimes, they will just pick it up and move it. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at underwater footage. But if you notice, the majority of the time, a bass does not like to approach or attack a crawfish from the front, especially when that little guy gets up in that um, defensive position and puts those pincers up. It'll often stop a bass right there in their tracks. They will usually attack it from the side or the rear, so that's important to know. And then another biologist had done some studies on what types of crawfish are eaten the most by bass. And by types of crawfish, I mean ones with both pincers, one pincer removed, both removed, and then even some legs removed. And by far and away, the crawfish that got eaten the most were the ones that did not have their defensive pincers. Well, lure manufacturers have tried to imitate this, but the interesting thing is, as consumers, 
They didn't buy it. When they buy a crawfish imitator, they want it to look like a crawfish, healthy crawfish with all the pincers on there, even though you're more likely to get strikes without the pincers on the crawfish bait. So very interesting. And it makes us kind of think back to the soft plastic tube or the original gets it. Hmm, makes you wonder why that bait or that why that lure is so effective because that does kind of look like a crawfish when you fish it through the rocks that does not have any pincers on it. So you may want to reconsider going back to get that old tube jig out because it is a highly effective lure when it comes to imitating that type of prey. The last thing that we want to talk about is crawfish in terms of matching the color or matching the hatch, you know, is the popular term. So we know that they are different color phases throughout the year. When they molt, they're your brighter colors. Otherwise, they're more your drab olives or browns. So really the best thing to do, one, you go to the boat ramp or you're walking along the bank when you're shore fishing, start to flip over some rocks. That is an easy way to see what color phase or pattern they're in. The other thing that you can do is go ahead and get a crawfish trap and then put it out overnight, uh, put some cat food, dog food, something in there, get, some, get a few crayfish in there and take a look at them the next morning and see exactly what color pattern or phase that they are in and then you can match it exactly and it does make a difference because of what the bass are used to seeing. So I hope that you found this pretty interesting in the fact that yes, you know, crawfish can be in these bright reds and, and oranges in the spring when the molt is going on, but it's pretty uh, fascinating that when they are in that color phase, they have already participated in the breeding season and are back down in those crevices and mud holes. They are more in their olive drab uh, greens and browns when those males are up on top walking on those rocks when the bass are really gorging down on them. So I'm sure that you found this interesting just like I did. Remember the article is linked down below if you would like to take a look at it. Hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today because you never know how you just might change their life for the bass fishing life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers.